They stand out to walnuts. <laughs> a lot better. Yeah, pretty, pretty. <laughs> a, lot a lot better, better than cloth. <laughs> well, and a lot better than the the old aluminum ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you know, a walnut would deck one of them things. These not yeah. so much. Yeah. I know what it is. It's because it's indoors. Huh? Because it's indoors. Yeah, that's what I was saying. It just seems very outside. Yeah, it seems so much bigger, but it's because it's inside. Okay. It, right. I mean, let me go back. Okay, the black wire is the hot wire. Mm -hmm. It's got a white stripe, but it's a black one. It also has a fuse right in line on the black one. Mm -hmm. And this little fuse here shuts off. Ice, well, basically, it isolates the battery from the rest of the camper. You've got things in there, the power converter, mm -hmm. the LP gas leak detector, mm -hmm. that um, run all the time. Yep, you can't yep. turn them off. Can't turn them off. And so, if you s leave this thing sit for a month without camping in it, you're going to go out and you're going to have a dead battery. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you're going to leave it sit for a while, just pull this little fuse here. Okay. And if you're afraid you're going to lose it, just turn it around and stick it back in here. <laughs> It actually travels pretty good like that. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, that's... But if you listen... Oh yeah, I saw it too, it arced. Yeah. Well, it's like you said, you got things running in there. Yeah. Well, you got your lights and everything on, so yep. you're, gonna, you're gonna catch a spark. Uh -huh. Did I mention I was an electrician? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> there it goes. I should give that fuse to you to put that on. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Good luck figuring this thing out. Oh, it's just that little slide thing. Those are a pain. Sometimes you, these things pop apart and you can... Uh, yeah, feed it right through there, right? Yeah. There it goes. That's as good as you're going to get. <laughs> Ta-da! Oh, look at Yeah. yeah, the most aggravating thing about boat batteries is that. I'm putting the lid back on. Yeah, well, they all use that strap, <laughs> every one of them. Yeah, safety chains, we can talk more about those when we okay. go to hook up. This is also a breakaway switch with the electric mm -hmm. brakes on here. Yeah, that's new. <laughs> but there's a little cable on, we'll give you a little carabiner for that too. And uh, should you be driving down the road, and all of a sudden the camper starts getting smaller in your rear view mirror. <laughs> uh -huh. This little cable pulls out of here and, and applies the brakes. Okay. okay. So it brings it more or less to a rapid stop and hopefully it doesn't minimize any damage. And people say, oh, that's never going to happen. I did it once. How did with you a do 30, it? With a 39-foot camper. Uh -huh. It was the first, I, I had built a specialty truck hauler. Took part of the motor home, put his big heavy steel flatbed on it anyway. My first trip with a big camper with my new truck and a uh -huh. right distributing hitch bars and everything else. I forgot to put the pin in that holds the whole assembly in the back of the truck. Okay. I just slid it in there, hooked up the camper to it. I made it about five miles down the road. Luckily I was only going about 25 miles an hour on the back road when the thing came off. And this post here put a two inch deep, two inch <laughs> wide groove <laughs> down the road. And at the last, it just kind of slowly moved off to the side. Yeah. And there I was. <laughs> so, anyway. Um, <laughs> well, I was just going to say, I've 
was just saying, it was just a, it was just a, a the problem was with the actual picking it up, not the mechanics of the machines. Exactly. Yep, <laughs> it's, it's all on me. <laughs> okay, the gas is now on. Batteries are going to freeze. I don't know if you want to look at the show or inside here. <clears throat> you do want to look in the back of the refrigerator uh -huh. because back here is where the controls are. Okay. Um, and they're all down here and these little knobs just turn right between these. Sometimes you've got to put a quarter or a dime or something in the turn. And then carefully. In here. You can, you can burn LP gas, which is the most efficient way to, to heat stuff up. Okay. You can have run it off of 120 volts, which is Second most efficient, almost as good as gas. You can run it off 12 volts. Mm. It really draws a lot of 12 volt crank to get it to run. If you're going down the road and your car, your tow vehicle is feeding 12 volts here, mm. usually that's good enough to get it to work. work. But it, it's a maintainer, not a real cooler okay. on a 12 volt motor. Um, 110 works great. Gas, heat it up. Sweet. Um, to get them to work, it says attention. Turn on only one energy source at a time. Just don't turn all three on <laughs> and expect it to cool down faster. It's going to take three or four hours no matter what you do. Okay. Okay, one at a time. 12 volts, it's just on and off. Um, because it's just it's just a straight shot drawn right off the battery. It sucks about 15, 20 amps, mm -hmm. which is that's quite a vampire. Yeah. Sure. Yep. And if you're not charging your battery, your battery's only got about two hours. Okay. To run this thing. Um, on 120 volts, on and off, because it's more efficient, they give you an adjustment for it. From from zero to seven. Uh huh. Think of it as a, well, your household refrigerator's got one yeah. like that. It goes zero to 10 or whatever. And you just tune it, tune it, tune it until you get the right temperature. And in your house, because your house is about the same temperature all the time, you just, once you set it, pretty much it's good forever. Mm -hmm. In a camper, you'll get days like today <laughs> and, and you'll get the other extreme. Yeah. So you need to adjust this more often. Okay. And so seven, I, I think of it as a throttle, more than a thermostat type setting. So seven is the, it's given it all it's got. One, not so much. Five in the middle somewhere, you know, for most days. Um, and all you can do is, you, well, you can put a uh, thermometer in your refrigerator if you want. But I tell people, when you wake up in the morning and go pour some milk on your shirt and it comes out in, in ice, well, maybe yeah. you should turn it down a little okay. bit. Okay. That's just going to get really warm during the day. But anyway, so it just you'll have to monkey with that a little bit. Okay. When it's when you're running on 120 volts. Similarly, when you're running it on gas, you have high, medium, and low. Mm -hmm. And it actually is a high flame, a medium flame, and a low flame. Okay. Now to get the flame to light, right now it's on off. Push it down. Turn it to high. Press it in, and pop the little button. Just like your home furnace. Mm -hmm. Yep. Hold it till it stays. Okay. okay, now now listen as I mm -hmm. pop the button. Ready? I don't know if you heard I'm gonna poof the a little first poof. Car yeah, a little poof yeah. thing. Yeah. Oh. What yeah. that means is you've got gas now. Mm -hmm. But once you hear that poof, you've got to go faster because the poof actually blows the flame out. Okay. It, it builds up too much gas, blows it out. So you just hold it down, press the button faster. Okay. 